Okay. So I really enjoyed this conversation today. Um, I think it's great for anyone, any age, um, any demographic, parents, single people, anyone who has bad habits that they're trying to knock. Um, Ashton Doctor is was our guest today, and he talks about intention over motivation because motivation is just fleeting, which you know has really stuck with me. Um, he teaches people how to train their mind um, when it comes to getting over bad habits and creating new good ones. Uh, really enjoyed that, and he has a children's book teaching kids how to change their habits and teaching parents how to talk to their kids about that. Cause that's really big deal. Um, what, what did you take from this episode? I liked him. I liked his demeanor. Uh, I like, he's the kind of guy uh, he's 40, but I felt his maturity was more well, than absolutely. mine. I, and I, I want to spend time with him. And I felt like he's someone worth paying to learn from and being more time with him. So, uh, and he just seems like a genuinely nice guy. And, I agree. You know, he spoke simple English, nothing complex. He didn't come up with any scientific theories. Even the way he described uh, the famous Atomic Habits book by James Clear made sense to right. me. So, uh, yeah, I think let's bring him on. And uh, I think everybody's going to enjoy the show. Hi, and welcome to Indian Explorers. In this podcast, we talk about Indian success stories. I am Sabrina, and together with my co-host Amit, we will get to understand the journey of our guests and what drives them. Their optimism, patience, idealism, and courage. These are their attributes that we hope to bring to life in these conversations with them. So if you enjoy the show, please hit the subscribe button and share it with others. Good morning. Good morning, Sabrina. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. What's going on? I'm getting this removed tomorrow. So hopefully for the next episode, we'll be back to the best looking podcast hosts out there. <laughs> it's a tie between the two of us. <laughs> no, I'm saying our we're the best looking like, oh, pair okay, okay. compared to yeah, other yeah, shows yeah. out there. That's yeah, what I meant, Sabrina. Sure. 100%, Teamwork. 100%. Teamwork. Hey, what, Teamwork. what happened here anyway? What, what did you do? You didn't tell us on the other episode. Uh, I don't know if it's called a cyst or what, what it is, but basically something was growing and growing and growing. And uh, the dermatologist, when I finally got the appointment, uh, said, just cut it off. Okay. So. It's like, a, were you lying to your wife? And then like, instead of your nose, it was a cyst. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, I, my whole face would be full of cysts. <laughs> You know, Sabrina, I want I want to ask you today for some parenting advice, if that's okay. Sure, if I can. I don't sure. know. I feel like I've been messing up lately. Go so for it. My nine-year-old had a, a sleepover uh, last uh, this weekend. Okay. Uh, a friend of his uh, who's leaving the school in a couple of months uh, decided to you know spend the night. We obviously invited him. And I got the popcorn ready. I got the big screen. I dimmed the lights. I put comfortable sofas. Mm -hmm. Uh, got all the chocolates and candy out. And yeah. then I put a movie on and I put uh, Spider-Man, right? Okay. And as the scene started in Spider-Man, there was a scene where, the, where they enter the lab and the doctor or the professor has only one arm, you know, mm -hmm. amputated. Mm -hmm. And the, the, my, my son's friend said, oh, I'm not allowed to watch these type of movies. <laughs> so I go back and I see the rating and it's plus 13. Now, okay. my son has seen all the Marvels, all the Avengers, yeah. you know, everything. And they're all 13, 14, et cetera. Now, they're both nine. So I look at this kid and I go, listen, I don't want to get in trouble with his parents or anything, right? So I was like, Are you want to skip this? He goes, yeah, I'm not allowed to watch this movie. So my son looks at me and goes, change it, dad. <laughs> so I said, okay, what do you want to watch? I ended up watching Garfield, which is like zero plus <laughs> rating. Yeah. So, so I told my wife the next day, right? She was already passed out with the baby. And she goes, yeah, we're, we're spoiling our children by, you know, I, I was thinking of taking Gotham to Planet of the Apes this weekend. You know, okay. and that's plus What's the 13. Okay. Plus 13. Over here, everything's plus 13, right? Yeah. So what are your thoughts? Like, you know, your daughter is 10. Like, is she allowed 11. to see? Just turned 11. 11. Yeah. Sorry. Is she allowed yeah. to see a plus 13 movies if you're present? 
or yeah. you and Noel are like absolutely not. So obviously it depends on the movie, right? Uh, two, it was about two years ago where she had some friends over and I forget what movie they were watching or they were watching a show on Netflix, Netflix kids. But some of those are like teenage shows, right? Sure. And I paused it and I text the moms and I was like, Hey, are you okay? I mean, they were nine at the time. Oh, you, so, you actually asked the parents. I asked because I was like, I don't want to be that mom where they're not letting their kid come over anymore. You know, like, Oh, yeah. well they, you know, they watch YouTube all the time or something, you know, I just didn't want to be that mom, but I like say mean girls, for example, Noel yeah. was against her watching mean girls, the original. And I was fine with it. All the kids are talking about it at school. And I was like, I'd rather she watch it with me. And I explain things. Right. Okay. Yeah. So once we did that, I mean, and there were things that were so over her head that I sure. was like, Oh, it's fine. Um, yeah. And then we went to see mean girls too. And there's things that are over her head. I think, I think it depends on the maturity level of the kid too. Um, there's some kids that will, will start Googling stuff and look it up. I know Naima, for example, is not like that. Like, it's just like, it's so over her head. I think that innocence is still there. Um, but I do think ratings are so much more relaxed now than when we were kids. Don't you agree? Um, I don't remember not going to a movie because of rating. Like in Las Palmas, yeah, it's not same. a, it's not a obligatory or compulsory thing. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, but there's a lot of like in even PG 13, there's like a lot of like making out and swear words. And I'm like, I don't feel like that was a thing when we were growing up, when I yeah. was 11. I was surprised because after Garfield, I put Cobra Kai and within, <laughs> but Cobra Kai is karate kid. Like, yeah, you know, it's... I'm all about it, but there are stuff, there's stuff in there, right? Well, actually within the first three minutes, the amount of F bombs that were, yeah. were there, I myself switched it off. Yeah. Yeah. So when it we was... think, okay, it's fine. But, yeah. you know, she hears the F-bomb all the time, like on TV. And I'm like, you just don't say yeah. it. Those are adult words. But So your parenting advice is either A, ask the parents, or B, depends on the maturity of the child. Is that the answer? Yeah, I would say so. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah. You know what? I'm impressed with the kid who said, I'm not allowed to watch this. You know what? At the beginning, I was like, oh, I hate this kid. <laughs> You're like, I really want to watch Spider-Man. No, do you know how long it takes to find a movie that, yeah. you know, that three people want to watch and that it's yeah. okay for adults and for children? Yeah. You know, it's that one it of these half an hour both. zapping. Yeah. Yeah. So then Spider-Man is a win. I haven't seen it in many years. You know, Peter Parker, you know, I always like the girl. Anyway, yeah. uh, that was my thing. Um, anything to comment from your side, Sabrina? Not about that. Um, you know... Our guest today, if you don't mind me bringing up a little bit about him, sure. um, is a habit coach. And I I actually have made the effort to change habits lately. Like you had said one of your New Year's resolutions was to give up um, Coke Zero, but you fell off the wagon. And I've given it up since January now, and I feel so much better. Oh, yeah. So like That's I awesome. broke that habit. Um I don't drink coffee anymore. Like every day I will treat myself like here and there, but I don't yeah. do that anymore. Um, so I've broken some habits. So I'm curious to see why he got into this and, and how he advises people to break habits. That sure. habit. You know what? He's coming on in the next few minutes. Yeah. Uh, since we got two minutes, I want to just, you know how last week I told you about Twitter, something that I really enjoyed that, uh, yeah. that Japan story. Yeah, so, the guy who went to Japan and took a... Yeah. yeah. So uh, if I can share something that I like this week from Twitter, I think we're going to yeah. make this a regular thing. Okay, uh, go for it. Basically, there's this guy called John. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I think it's French. Lefebvre. Okay. Lefebvre. R-L-E-F-E-V-R-E. -E -E. so, okay. Lefebvre. Anyway, so he just put two words. Watch is explained. And then he puts Rolex dash Mercedes-Benz. Patek Philippe. Dash Rolls Royce, Casio, Dash Honda. <laughs> then he put Richard Mill, McLaren. 
AP, i.e. Audemar Piguet, Ferrari. Then he puts Tag Ur, Cadillac. Then he puts Apple. Guess now you guess the cars. Apple, which car? Mm, it has to be a common car. Um, oh, I wasn't ready for this. Apple is a Tesla. Correct. Oh, wow. Okay. Correct. And uh, Breitling? Breitling. Breitling will be like a tough car, um, like a truck. Lexus. Okay. And, oh, we're and, talking about like luxury. Okay. Well, I mean, that's, you know, if Breitling is luxurious, Lexus is luxurious yeah. as well, right? Yeah. Hublot. I don't Hublot. know. Hublot watches. Hublot. The, the, all the Formula One guys use Hublot back in the day, Lewis Hamilton. Basically, like Lamborghini. A, a Corvette. Oh, Lamborghini. <laughs> Lamborghini. Cartier. Oh, that Classy. should be like a Jaguar. Bentley. Range Rover. Okay, Bentley. Bentley. Yeah. Anyway, I thought it was kind of cool way of explaining watches by yeah. associated with yeah. the cars. It was quite cool. Yeah, I got one right. That was a good one. Apple Tesla. Yeah. 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 Anyway, let's bring on our habit coach to see why I failed with my Coke Zero habit. Sounds good. Let's do it. Ashton Doctor, the habit coach, who is the founder of Awesome 180. He has created a leading platform in the health and wellness industry with his podcast, The Habit Coach, which ranks among the top self-development podcasts in India. Each podcast is designed to coach you through life's daily struggles and help you build awesome habits. Ashton is also the author of three best-selling books and as of now has two TEDx talks. Excited to learn more. Welcome. Thank you. Very excited to be here. Hi, Ashton. How are you? Very well. Hi, Amit. Where are you? What city? I'm in Mumbai, India. Oh, in Bombay. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. I want to start, like, you know, with a with with the last name that you've got. Your parents must have wanted you to be a doctor. So give us give us the background as to, you know, why have you become the habit coach? Maybe a little bit about your background, education, etc. So I'm a Parsi, right? And our surnames are all occupations. So we have engineer, doctor, even soda bottle opener, wala, which is actually a, so like people who actually open soda bottles. So that's a surname as well. Um, I became a habit coach and I had nothing to do with the family because the family business is market research and understanding consumers, etc. And that's what I did for 15 years. And um, then I was on my own personal quest and I had an epiphany saying that, you know, I want to help people and I want to be of service to the world. And I don't think I was being of service in market research. I was probably being of service to companies, but not necessary to individuals and human beings. And that's when the whole idea of doing something for people started. And it expressed itself in the form of starting a fitness business called Fitterbee, which was fitness through playing games. So, you know, it was for people who used to hate working out, couldn't go to the gym, they probably donated years of their gym money without ever actually going there. And once they started playing, the little child in them came out. And it was that that made them come back over and over and over. So they never went to the gym, but came here five times a week. So the whole idea was, how do you have fun while working out? However, I realized that people come there for an hour and then go back and then they sit on the sofa and watch TV. So... I wasn't creating enough of a change in their life with that. And that's when the whole idea of how do we actually understand the daily habits of people? But how, old how, were you? Sorry. how old were you when you did this? Mm, 32-ish. 32-ish. 31, 32-ish. Okay. Mm. But you grew up and I'm 40 now, so this is about eight years. I grew up and studied in Bombay. Okay, great. Lived here all my life. Okay. So and were you always between young age and 32, still young age, but were you always into fitness or something triggered it and said, oh, you know what? I want to take care of myself even more. So I was very lucky in college. I had a tra trainer who used to come and train me, etc. So okay. I had a good foundation. However, when I was working, all of that went out the window because, you know, the whole idea is you have to hustle, you have to work hard. And that time there was no hustle for your physical well-being. It was hustle for work. So, you know, working 12 hours a day was normal you had no time to go to the gym because you're like, that would be a waste of time. Why would I go there? And also in India at the time, going to the gym meant you wanted to be a bodybuilder. 
Sure. And, I'm a gold's gym. You know, and you're like, I remember those yeah. days. Correct, right? And and people would make fun of you saying that why you want to become the next Anand Schwarzenegger. And they would obviously mispronounce his name multiple times. So that was the, you know, the environment in which I became extremely unfit. For me, it was uh, butter chicken and jeera rice that were the normal meals because I thought, you know, if it's tasty, it's good for me. And uh, there was no concept of a salad. If it was a salad, it had to be a meat salad. You know, it was just like bananas yeah. back then when I think about it. So I wasn't always fit or I wasn't always into the fitness world. And then slowly, slowly, I realized that once the body starts changing, it's just a beautiful journey after that. Sure. I want to go back a second. Sabrina, he said he's a Parsi, just like we're Sindhis. What do you know Mm -hmm. about the Parsi community in India? How big it is, how rich and successful they are? You know what? Nothing. Uh, Shameful, but not much. No, let's just say nothing. Because at the end of the day, before I went to India... I didn't know what a Parsi was. Now, I had nine years in India, which you obviously don't have. So maybe, yeah. Ashton, if you can explain to us the relevance of the Parsi community, the Tatas, and how successful such a small community. I mean, forget the Jews in America, Sabrina. These guys are rock stars. So the Parsis came to India to avoid the Islam persecution many, many, many hundreds of years ago from Persia, that, that, that side of the world, Asia Minor. And we landed in Gujarat. And then the king of Gujarat gave us this uh, little piece of land for us to start from. And there's a whole story there, but that'll turn into a Parsi podcast. Um, Which I'm okay with. But, but... <laughs> <laughs> so the religion is Erastianism. And these people came from Pars, so they were called Parsis. And, um, and w- the funny thing is that a large part of our Parsi money was made trading. And guess mm-hmm. what we were trading? Opium. So we were Ooh. we were drug lords. I just love the I, I just love those. Oh, <laughs> so like Godfather like. Karina, <laughs> they are they are Cindy but, squared in terms of success. Yeah. And and what was interesting is that most of Bom- Mom- Bombay, the big buildings, etc., were built by the Parsis and then donated over to the government. Okay. And my favorite story is that of a and we are all eccentric. We're not mad. We're not crazy. We're eccentric. So we're just like a little cuckoo. I like that. Let, let's argue that another mm-hmm. time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my favorite story is that of a Parsi gentleman who built an entire bridge between um, two islands of Bombay. Bombay is made up of islands. Built an entire bridge just so that his wife could go meet his sister, meet her sister at the other end of uh, on the other island. And then said that, oh, you know what, Mumbai, you keep it. And then just opened it up to public. So the Mahim Bridge, that is a huge bridge in Bombay, is actually donated by the Parsis oh, in that wow. context. And then, then of course, the, the, there's a company called the Tatas, which is a family business that started ma- manufacturing steel as a middle finger to the British at that time that said that, you know, Indians will never manufacture steel. So they said, ah, let's do it and show you. So uh, in fact, a lot of the, the kind of stuff that the Parsis did was in line with colonialism and against colonialism. So it's a strange balance that took place between them. I think, I think Ratan Tata is India. I mean, what he's done, what he's built, you know, Taj, the Jaguar, you know, he's just, I know Mukesh Ambani is today's hero, but for me, Ratan Tata was, is, uh, for me, you know, the role model, the Steve Jobs and Elon Musk of India, for me. I have a special, um, I guess my heart with, is with the Tatas too, because Simone Tata is, um, knows my husband she actually helped my husband get adopted from pune to the us oh wow so i did not know that yeah yeah and a big thank you to her a huge thank you and every year she sends him like a holiday card or diwali and then they exchange emails and we still haven't gone to meet her and so we need to do it and and when is simone coming on the podcast sabrina (laughs) actually oh my gosh i have to ask her (laughs) I like that. Uh, Amit's actually noting this down. It's like follow up. <laughs> I've never told him this story. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, habits. Uh, habits. Mm. Habits. I'm very curious about this. So you're around 32 years old and you decide you want to make people, you want to give them knowledge to be healthier beings. So it, it didn't start off you. that way. So it didn't okay. start off that way at all, as all, at all. It started off with me being nice and pudgy and um, extremely unfit and I, could cl- I couldn't climb up a flight of stairs. I used to pant on my way up if I was climbing up a flight of stairs. 
there's no way that I could do a push up or hang from a bar. It was impossible at the time. And, um, and one fine day I was working and I probably hadn't slept for two nights because you know how we typically work is that we finish all our presentations in what is known as last minute panic. So I had procrastinated and I was finishing this presentation for my market research business at the time. And I was getting ready for the presentation in the morning and I was putting on my shirt and it just started sweating profusely. Mm -hmm. I felt my heart almost jump out of my chest. And I collapsed on the floor. And this was around that age, the 33, 132. Oh, panic attack and or heart attack? No clue because none of those, except for heart attack, none of those words like panic attack existed back then. Hmm. Right? It was, we knew heart attack and nothing. How old are Stroke, you? Stroke, probably those. How old are you? I'm 40 now. Four zero. Four zero. So that's, yeah, not long ago, seven, eight years ago. Yeah. Nobody spoke about panic attacks. Nobody wow. spoke about emotional issues. Nobody spoke yeah. about stress being all these things at that time. Yeah. It, these now seem so familiar, but it was a lot of work getting the message out there. I remember when on the podcast, we started talking about mental health. People were like, oh, we didn't know about this. How can you talk about going to a therapist on you know, public platform? So, and this is, this is five years ago. So obviously, times have changed quite dramatically. We talk about that a lot as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it is something that is so important, you know, um, because ultimately our thoughts create our life and our destiny. Yeah. So if you don't have the right thoughts, you're yeah. screwed. I have a bad habit. Anyway. One bad habit. Mm -hmm. I drink Which Coke is? Zero. I drink uh, three of these cans a day, these small cans. <laughs> mm. No, it's, 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 it's a bad habit because I'm actually addicted to it. I'm not an alcohol drinker. I play sport. I'm, you know, active, not a gambler, not a wife beater. Mm. You know, I'm like a normal good guy, but Coke Zero is my bad habit. And uh, you know, Ashton for New Year's that was his New Year's resolution to stop. And then one month. we did our podcast after New Year's, and he was back on it. Week. So how long does well, it? But take? why do you want to stop it? Um, I think it's a bad influence for my. I got three sons under ten, and mm. if they see me drink soda with every meal. And they're like, why can't we drink it? Uh, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm giving them a bad, uh, you know, reference. So I want to stop. I enjoy the taste and I enjoy everything about it. But I think, you know, the amount of fake sugar it's got mm -hmm. and the fact that I'm the fact that when I have a meal, I want something with it. Um, that's not just water. Um, you know, I don't but like you drink a lot of water. Yeah, I drink two liters a day. Yeah. Okay. A little bit more is needed, but the important thing is that you don't have a strong intention for letting go of it. Yeah. You're just saying that I'm a bad influence, but like, it's not, it's not strong enough for you to completely want to let go of drinking this as a habit. So what you need a health reason, case, you need a doctor to say you're going to die if you. So that's, that's the unfortunate thing. Many of us take it to that extreme saying that only once something dramatic happens to me, will I actually change. But more importantly, instead of going cold turkey and quitting, find something that you can replace that quote zero with. What is it that you enjoy that you can replace it with that is not probably as bad as you think Coke Zero is? Regular That's a better Coke. way of approaching it. I was just going to say that. Regular Coke. Or Diet well, Coke. Well, well, do that and then definitely you'll have a health problem. So yeah. like you will be on your way. Yeah. Okay. But, Sorry. Today's about you. All right. So let's talk about you. Uh, tell us what have you covered in your 1,500 podcasts what has struck you as good habits, bad habits? Give us a little but bit. But let me finish why I started this. Yes, yeah, yeah, that yeah. was Sorry, important. Bit. That. Sorry, I do this a lot. I jump yeah, a lot. You, you, you just went in like, my Coke Zero. All right. So, <laughs> so the important thing about what we're doing, the idea behind habit coaching is that we are against this one word called motivation, right? Because motivation is fleeting. And I realized this when I made this entire life change that I was telling you about. Like I was telling you, uh, the, the, the story got cut short, but like from that state of being extremely unhealthy, within a year, I had changed and I was, I had a six pack and just completely changed my life around. People were looking at that and asking Ashton, how did you do this? How did you manage this? And that's when I would tell them, you know, I did intermittent fasting. I started working out like this. I started following this. And they would listen for 25 seconds. And then stop me and say, Ashton, I don't have your motivation. Mm. I don't have your self-discipline. Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized that people are not changing because they don't think that they can. 
and this is coming back to your Coke Zero as well in, in, sure. in some ways, because when you were talking about it, you were almost talking about it helplessly, right? And it is so important for us to believe that we can do it before we actually start making that change. So the whole idea was how do I move this conversation from motivation to something that is far more solid? Motivation is fleeting, right? Motivation is like a matchstick. You light it and it burns bright for a few seconds and then it, poof, it's gone. But you need to light a stove in order to cook your food. You can't light a, cook your food on a matchstick. And for that, you need intention. And that's why I said you don't have a clear intention on why you want to stop it. Or you what mean, you what want is to the reason? Instead. What is your intent? A right? very, very deep reason for this. Mm -hmm. Right? So much so that once this change takes place, my life will be a million times better. Or I will identify with this new person in a very different way. So using your kids as an intention is fantastic, but having a very clear one. Just saying no to them because they're 10, nah. I don't want them to have a unhealthy habit for the rest of their life. I don't know. You have to find that mm -hmm. intention for yourself. It's different for different people. Sure. But for me, it was getting down to this crux of saying motivation is what we need to move away from and start using our intention. And then once we start creating habits that are small, that we can do every day, that momentum builds up and that compounds over time. So the whole idea is how do we move from intention to an action that compounds over time? How long do you think it takes? I've heard, I've read different things. How long does it take to create a new habit? So I've never seen it take 21 days to form a habit. I've never seen it take 72 days to form a habit. The reason being is that when you're so excited to form that habit, you almost think of it as an end point. And when there's an end point to your habit, you completely lose doing it after that. So you're like, okay, now I have my reading habit. And then you ask somebody about the reading habit five days later and be like, oh, you know, I've stopped reading. Why? So instead of having an end point for your habit, think about how you can grow with the habit. So if you, if your habit was reading five pages a week, uh, five pages a day, now make it 10 pages a day, right? So grow with your habit instead of being so obsessed about in 21 days, I have to form this habit. Because imagine if you did not form the habit or, or you missed a few days, missed the 20th day, missed the 19th day. Then you quit. Day. Then you quit. You're like, oh, I'm so useless. I can't even do this. Yeah. And that's the big issue with most of these habit um, streaks. You know, there are apps that give you this 21 day yeah. streak. Did you do this for 21 days? If you didn't, you're a loser. No, yeah. you're not a loser. You're a human being. What's yeah. the point of being a machine? So the whole yeah. idea is don't focus on the streaks but focus on how you can grow with the habit in the future. So yeah. see that trajectory. That's more I important. love it. It's training the mind, right? Mind mm -hmm. over matter. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think of this book? The, I think it's a fa the habit fabulous guru book. book. Mm. Mm -hmm. No, For no, those... that's not the habit guru book. No, meaning? It's Ashton's yeah. book is the yeah, habit yeah. guru I, book. I, I'll, I'll bring my books and hold them up. Is that the name of your book? Oh, are... Sorry. No, what, no, I, no, there's not. There's what not. I meant is that this is the Bible for many people. Uh, the Atomic mm -hmm. Habit by James Clear. Um, I read it and uh, it made sense. It was logical. Uh, but like you said, I don't have the intent to apply it. So the thing with uh, Atomic Habits, so Atomic Habits came out about, I think, six months after I started habit coaching. And I was like, wow, James Clear's written a book. Let me read it. And, and I, it was lovely because he spoke about all the things that I was doing. You know, starting something small. How do you grow it? And I was just like, okay, fine. This is, I remember I, w I had no background in habits at that point or habit coaching at that time, right? It was, I was just starting up. So it was a good um, uh, confirmation of what I was doing with my clients at that time. However, what was interesting about the book is it was so well theorized that nobody actually put it into practice. So everyone who's read Atomic Habits, like tell people, habit coach, they say, ah, I've read Atomic Habits. And my next question is, how much of it did you use? And they're like, no, I haven't used it at all. We understand it, but because we haven't used it. I feel the same way. They, I feel the same. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's a fantastic book, but we haven't used it. So the whole idea was that when I wrote my book, I was like, how do I make people use what I'm saying? So my book does not have theory, like James' book does, because if you want theory, go read his book. It's fantastic. My book has a simplified way of explaining habits to you. You know, like if you wanted to understand a routine, think of it as a train. One train car pulls the other. That's mm. basically what a routine is. You know, like simplify it down to that level and then figure out what your trains are during the day. 
right? So for example, for you, your train is at some point of time, just before you start your lunch, you go to the fridge and pick up your Diet Coke without thinking you're doing that. Yeah, it's a habit, right? right? It's a habit. But if your Diet Coke was not in the fridge and if it was in the garage, you probably wouldn't go to the garage and pick it up and put it in there. Yeah, I'd send the mate down to the store and pick one up. <laughs> correct. So it's but friction. that would at least be, it would be, a, it would be friction. You're adding something to it that's going to make it a little more difficult. What if you bought one Coke at a time just before your meals? It would be very difficult to constantly do that. In fact, that's what I tell people who want to um, stop smoking. I was like, why do you want to buy a packet of cigarettes and have them lying around? In India, we can go buy one single cigarette. So I was like, okay, go down to the store every time you want to smoke. If you were smoking 10 cigarettes, now it'll become four. Now you're not going to go down to the store 10 times. So that itself is half of what you're doing. So that's the way to start thinking about it. You know, um, why do most people smoke? They smoke just before entering their work as a full stop for their morning and a start of their working day. And they definitely smoke at the end of the day when they're coming back home. Many people have a drink when they're coming at, at home as a full stop for their working day. So you see all these routines and you see all these habits that people have. And if you can get to that point, you can then dissect them so the whole thing was atomic habits fantastic but how do you implement yeah. which is yeah. the worst habit or which is the hardest habit to to control or from your experience with all your clients that you mm -hmm. find that most people have failed is it eating habits is it sleeping habit like which is the hard one? telephone the phone scrolling instagram social, social. media mm. so i thought you so, were going to say it was like the working out or the eating i thought be no, no 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 it's and all of that is doable. The problem is that the phone has a, has companies spending billions and billions of dollars trying to figure out how to get you more and more hooked to it, right? And as a result, how, what 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 sort of little hope do we have as little human beings to control yeah. us? Don't tell anyone, Ashton, but I think Sabrina is actually uh, hooked to addicted to TikTok and phone. Instagram. What? I actually found a game. Uh, it's like a Tetris type of game. Don't tell, it. And Don't tell us the I'm name. Actually addicted. Don't tell us the name. Because you'll get addicted. Yeah. We actually, <laughs> Bad habit. we're both scared of, not us, but we're both scared of what age do we give. She has an 11-year-old. I have a 9-year-old. And, you know, my son's been asking me for an iPhone and for a console, you know, for three years now. And every Christmas, he's disappointed. Yeah. The answer is never. Never. That's mm. also not a practical answer, is it? that's the ideal answer because you, you speak to most of the IT founders and, they, and they haven't given electronics to their children yeah, Zuckerberg said he doesn't really? allow his kids to yeah uh, Elon Musk and Zuck have both said publicly that we don't give our children phones mm -hmm. wow yeah. zero yeah. And, and you will the see that irony. no it's not irony it they're is, smart uh, Sabrina yeah they yeah, know their product is right. poison yeah, yeah. It, it, it's like contact lens manufacturers don't use contact lenses. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's like simple things. Because they have perfect vision. Wow. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Sabrina? Your, your podcast, um, you know, you talk about habits. What are some other things you talk about on the podcast that people will are drawn to? I mean, you talked about, now you're talking about mental health in India. What else? So the podcast, like I was saying, is over, I think, seven years now. So we have about 1,500 episodes plus of it. And the podcast is divided into solo episodes, which are four to seven minutes. That's just me talking about different aspects of life. So it can be fitness, it can be relationships, it can be productivity, it can be finance, any of these things. Because ultimately, all of these are habits that we have. It can be mental well-being, like you said, as well. And... Um, and then we have guest episodes where we invite either coaches, doctors, celebrities, people who have something that the listener can learn from. You know, like our, our audience are people who are hungry to take action, right? So they want to hear something and immediately put it into action. So that's mm -hmm. the kind of crowd that we have on the podcast. And so all the guests are around that. You mentioned relationships and I saw on your website that you talk about mental, no, physical, mental, and social habits. Mm. Um, that's something in the U.S. I'm in Texas, and that's something in the U.S. that you're starting to hear a little bit of social health, social fitness, right? Um, tell us what, you know, for the people listening that don't know, what is social health? 
Oh wow, I didn't know that social health was becoming a thing there. It was very, you know what? Maybe because I look for that stuff, mm -hmm. I research that stuff, but I don't know if people just are he are reading articles on social health. And, and, but I and after that, mm -hmm. add what Indians think about Americans. Uh, no, no, we're not going to go there. But oh, uh, <laughs> it's my favorite subject. No, 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 zero. Uh, in, in Japan, they do this. You know, when you're like, no. <laughs> Um, oh, so, so, so the whole thing about so social health is this, that, um, you know, when they do longevity studies, they found that the number one parameter for long, I mean, a long life is what your social circle is like. The bigger your social circle, the more social interactions, the longer you live. And what's happening right now is that we are basically become lonely, lonelier, 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 lonelier. We're becoming more alone and we're creating false pseudo relationships. Like how many of us have a relationship with Alexa? Don't, don't yeah. start Alexa. <laughs> yeah. How many of us have that relationship, right? And, right. and that's the thing because we are, we are ordering from apps where we don't have to pick up the phone and speak to a human being. So what's happening is that we're distancing ourselves and we're losing the habits and we're losing the skills that are needed for social interaction, having conversations, how to joke with people. And this is why we're becoming more sensitive as well because... You know, like in, in uh, there, was in, there was a phrase called roughhousing, right? Like when you used to like, oh, but it was done out of love. Now, roughhousing, especially, you know, like verbal roughhousing is seen as I'm insulting you. But it was not meant that way ever. And if you see tribal societies, there's a lot of roughhousing that happens because that is how the social bonds get tighter. What's lacking now is the ability to communicate. Um, where are people learning their communication skills from? They're learning their communication skills from TV, TikTok. Netflix, mm -hmm. their TikTok, phone. Yeah. their phone, right? And what are people communicating on TV, TikTok, phone? They're all communicating drama. Yeah. And that is what's fit feeding into our brains. Family members, grandparents are no longer teaching us how to talk. It is drama that is teaching us how to talk. You know, we are learning social manipulation from the TV. And that's what's causing so many issues. So if we learn how to communicate, if we learn how to listen and are completely focused on the person that we're talking to, we can make a dramatic difference in the way that we interact. Right. So there all of these a, are habits. A Harvard study that came out last year, um, they had conducted it over many decades and clearly said people who have stronger social relationships live a longer, healthier life. Correct. Right. I mean, it's, Absolutely. it makes sense. It affects positively affects your physical health, your mental health. So when, whenever Sabrina quotes Harvard, I just, you know, I'm in such awe. <laughs> the research that's so from done. Harvard, Sabrina. What's that? Were you from Harvard? No, I did. She, re she oh, rejected okay. Harvard. <laughs> I did. I did. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, Ashton, I wanted to ask you about, um, AI, if it's, uh, if it's something we should look forward to or are you scared of? When I say look forward to, you know, we'll have an AI pet, an AI robot at home that even though I'm lonely, I can speak to the AI robot. And as you can see with the latest version of chat GPT 4, 0, 40, whatever it's called, it's becoming a little bit more emotive. There's more charm that's been introduced to this machine learning. So are you scared of AI or are you think it's going to be a solution? I am thoroughly excited by AI. Because if you look back at uh, our history, every time there's been a technological change, it hasn't reduced the number of jobs or you know employment, etc. It's just upskilled people. And the expansion that has taken place after that has been dramatic. The problem is that if you don't embrace AI, AI is going to consume you. But if you embrace it and you learn and you learn with it, definitely it's going to be a big, big boost to us. Why wouldn't it be? Can everything be used? Badly, of course it can, right? Like um, gunpowder can be used to kill people. Gunpowder can be used in good ways as well. Yeah. But the thing is that how you use it. You have enough content out there to upload all your content into some AI tool. And from now oh, we've on... We've done that. Yeah? You've done yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, Oh, so, mm -hmm. so you could actually so, do so a full have... session. We could be actually talking to an AI version of you right now. It could be... <laughs> we have to prove that you're real. <laughs> 
so I did that and um, we actually translated it into Japanese and Chinese and Italian and there was an Ashton face talking all these languages. Oh, that's cool. That's like Mr. Beast. It's very insane. cool. You've reached Mr. So Beast just, level. Yeah, so just think about it, right? It's just that now I can talk to somebody in Russia, I can talk to somebody in Thailand and I can communicate what I wanted to and yeah. help people. So it's it's dramatic if you embrace it. If you don't and you're thinking small, it's going to be scary. Sure. I always told Very Sabrina cool. with Indians being worldwide, most Indians speak English, but actually we don't have it in Hindi, Marathi, you know, in all the local languages. It's something we should mm. look to do yeah. soon. Hey, Ashton, I was curious, what is your favorite workout regimen? So I now I'm doing these things called calisthenic workouts. So it's okay. all body weight training. What's interesting is that your workouts change as you age, because yeah. I, when I hit 40, I suddenly realized that my body is not recovering as it used to. That's this year, and Ashton. That's this. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's this year. I was just like, why am I so sore? What is going on? <laughs> like my shoulder is still hurting from Monday. What's going on? Yeah. Oh, wait till you're 47. And, <laughs> yeah. So in fact, I'm, I'm getting a trainer on the podcast to discuss this very topic. Okay. Because, yep. Yeah. But anyway, so so I realized that, you know, doing the typical gym workouts, a uh, high intensity workout was not necessarily f for me. So now right. I've changed it from doing more calisthenics, more body weight, more yoga and those aspects put in. But my f the I, I learned my working out from a person called Jeff Cavalier, who has this YouTube channel called Athlean And it's a massive, massive channel now. But 10 years ago, when I started following him, it was just like, a, you know, like a few hundred subscribers and things like that. And he talks about the scientific approach to training yourself and training your body. So that's what I love about it. Awesome. I like that. Was, and I had one more question. Yeah, what, Hold what on. What was the Sorry. question? Physical regiment. What, like his workout. What's, what's his go-to workout? Got it. Yeah. You have three books. Hmm. You know, we discussed one. Um, one Habit a Day. Then you have Change Your Habits, Change Your Life. And then you have a kid's book, The Book of Good Habits for Kids. How Good. has the children's book been received? Do you have kids, media? Ashton? I don't have kids okay. and I see that as an advantage for the book because it helped me look from look at life from an outsider's perspective, you know, because I've worked with so many parents and their kids and their behaviors. And um, most of the issues that parents had with kids was just the way they spoke to them. So when we wrote the book, it was from that language of how do we, you know, teach parents to communicate with their children. Either they are talking down to their children, do as I say, you know, like without any explanation, they're not treating the children in what commas as adults and explaining why they need to be doing the things that right, they do. Right, right. So many, so the feedback from the book is that many people have replied back saying that, you know, f the habits, of course, and my child loves the book, loves the characters, but as an adult, I learned how to speak to my child. And for me, that was the biggest win from this book, because of course it is for the child to learn how to, you know. Um, think about money, think about friends and all those aspects. But it's so important for the mother and the father to learn how to talk to their child. I need this book. Right. I really need, <laughs> I need it because I'm starting, my kids are starting to say things because they're starting to say, what the, because like, you know, when I enter and I see them, I go, what the hell? You know, like what the, eh? and I stop using the, the bad word. But now my three-year-old, every time he comes in and he sees us, he goes, what the, what the, <laughs> And my wife just looks at me and goes, good job. Another bad habit. Good job. Another bad habit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm like a tally mark. If I'm not. Yeah, seriously. I need that. Ashton, we ask all our guests uh, what success means to them. What is the definition of success and whether that definition has evolved uh, over the years? Love to hear yours. Uh, so, so when I was young, when I was much younger, success was financial success mm -hmm. and power. And that was the way that I was thought of. Uh, that's what, that's the way I was brought up. So we looked up to people with financial success and power. Your Parsi is coming and, out, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then what I realized was that it's, n it's not the end goal, but living life on your terms, I think, is a better format of success. And those terms can change over the course of time. So that's perfectly mm -hmm. fine and allowing that to happen. Um, so now it is living life on your own terms, doing what I want, when I want, et cetera, et cetera. Not being bound by things is one aspect of it. Um, responsibility, of course, a very important aspect of success because the more successful you are, the more responsibility comes to you. 
but knowing what to say no to knowing what to accept i think is such an important part of that nice i, love that. Now, I wanted your That's thoughts ashton on this line um it's my favorite line in john wick 4 uh it's not i mean obviously you killed some... my dog no not that one not that one <laughs> uh the line is the line actually was by this woman called martha uh, burke or something the oprah winfrey's uh coach mental coach okay. or life coach whatever you call it it's the way you do anything is the way you do everything yeah, yeah? as a yeah. habit coach what do you think about that uh quote i use it all the time as a coach because um you see it in the way that people talk to you know especially like when you're when you're uh working with extremely wealthy indians they have a way of talking down to their staff for example or they have a way of treating people still and you start pick in today's yeah, day yeah, and age dramatically yeah very very much so amit i'm mean, very much so yeah and and what's interesting is not just india um i have the fortune of working with people from all over the world and it's a it's a big issue um because what happens is that people start becoming in india we call matlabi yeah entitled right? if you can do yeah and yeah. no 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 matlabi matlabi is not entitled matlabi is if you can do something for me i'm good to you if you can't yeah mm mm-hmm. you know it. so 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 like i will treat people differently depending on what i can receive from them that sure. in, in that in that style so you start picking this up and you're like ah okay fine if that person's doing that here i'm sure they're doing that in other aspects of their life as well sure we're cindy so, so we've yeah. used that word a lot mm, exactly yeah <laughs> matlab hi so we so, hear it, so we hear it at every wedding it. Uh, a, f- a fantastic thing is you look at people's homes and you start understanding about them you know like how do they keep their house you can understand the state of their mind in that sense and 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 the most important thing is that when you start doing these things to do them from a lens of non-judgment it's not that this is bad this is good it is that this is how this person is it is what it is yeah right and the issue is that we put judgment on all these things and it's like oh this is a bad behavior this is a good behavior entitlement is not bad entitlement is fantastic but if you use it correctly privilege mm-hmm. is not bad privilege is fantastic but if you use it correctly right so it it depends on how you're using these things Yeah. Absolutely. I feel like I could learn a lot from you hanging out more with you. More yeah, podcasts. 1500. You need to hire him. No, I was thinking to... I was thinking I'm moving to Bombay anyway. So if I move to Bombay, you'll become my best friend. No. Oh, good come, luck come. Ashton. <laughs> good luck. Where where in Bombay? Where in Bombay do you live? Where Lee? Um in in Bandra. In Bandra. Perfect. Mm, mm. And, and and in India we have a Stevia based Coca uh, not Coca-Cola but a cola company so that'll be probably okay. better for you. What thumbs up? No stevia based thumbs up is the stevia based okay <laughs> Ashton who who inspires you who's your role model so this is something that i struggled with a lot um especially last year um so every year i ha- i set an intention for myself like what is that i want from this year so the intention for this year is to understand who i used to be so I looked at baby pictures and said that what was that baby like and what have I forgotten about that right um the intention for last year was to understand masculinity because I realized that there are almost no good male role models in the world right um it, you would be hard pressed to find male role models that you can understand masculinity through and um and 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 different people are trying different things so i started deep diving into it and understanding what masculinity means what is the um you know the spiritual male in that sense and uh, i w- what i started doing was picking up different aspects from different people so instead of having one role model because i find the more you study somebody the more bad things also you learn about them that you don't necessarily want in your life so it's a better way of doing it or thinking about it is what are, what can i pick up from everybody that i interact with So that was what the journey for last I year. I really really like that. I've never thought of it that way. Um can you name I mean are there a couple that meet we might know that you've Andrew Tate? Taken? Elon Musk. So so my favorite quote not my favorite uh, thing that I heard recently was that Andrew Tate is the version of masculinity for young boys that 
um, Donald Trump is the version of rich for poor people. You know, like Donald Trump is like, I have gold taps and I have this and I have 14 private jets, etc. And really, really wealthy people don't have gold taps and don't have private jets, etc., etc., etc. You know, it is their showing off. And that's what a poor man thinks rich is in the same way. This is what little boys thinks masculinity is. Andrew Tate is fantastic. He has certain aspects that are brilliant in what he talks about. There's other stuff that is pure for purely for click, click, clickbait, and then you you have to you have to in your mind delete it off. Otherwise, it can't affect you. I love listening. Yeah, to I you. think it's very You're interesting. Great. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, um, what is what is next for you? Any new projects coming up? Or tell us about Awesome so 180 I'm, a bit more. Sure. So right now I'm ex um, I'm exploring. Uh, the international market with regards to coaching. So I'm doing okay. a lot more uh, clients abroad than in India. Um, the idea of the coaching is how do we get people out of frustration? You know, mm -hmm. you might be killing it at work, right? You, you might have like a billion dollars in your bank, but there are still frustrations in your life. You just can't figure out how to talk to your children. You just can't figure out how to, you know, uh, stick to your diet plan. You still can't, you just can't figure out these things. And that frustration settles in into your life. So I come and help people with that. And um, so I was just in um, Thailand recently in Bangkok at the Four Seasons working with the guests there. Okay. So, so the whole idea, so I was there for two and a half weeks, just like basically oh, nice. meeting these guests and talking to them. And um, so that's what's happening on the coaching front. Um, okay. We're doing lots of workshops, etc., for corporates. Um, we have a new book coming out on productivity in October. So okay. looking forward to that. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, I think and, after uh, this episode, your international clientele is just going to, oh, you, you won't be able to handle it. You won't be able to handle it. <laughs> Call me. You know, there's so many, I see so many people now are health coaches, right? But this, this makes sense to me because like you said, there's, you change the little things, you change habits, you change the mindset, right? Um, sometimes I'm like, I don't, how is so-and-so just become a health coach? How is this person just becoming a health coach? But what you're telling me actually makes sense. Like it, it does. And that's the thing, right? Like you can buy a certification. So, you know, the issue is that it's so easy to be certified into something right now, especially during the lockdown, because everyone was sitting at home and they couldn't figure out what to do. We got so many coaches being certified left, right, and center, etc. And uh, sorry, no, no, it's great. I, I whenever I need coaching, I just call Sabrina up and talk to her for five minutes. Mm -hmm. That's my piece of code. And then I, I can't take it anymore. And then she I'm hangs like, up. Oh, fine. Yeah, I think that's why he <laughs> he got in touch with you. No, no, let she go speak to my brother. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Ash, we're gonna, Ashton, we're going to go into the rapid fire round where we'll just ask mm -hmm. some questions. If you can keep the answer short, we'd appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, one piece of advice you wish you knew when you started your habit journey? Uh, don't take yourself too seriously. Take your work seriously. Don't take yourself too seriously. I like that. Um, favorite way to unwind after a busy day? have an early dinner and probably sit on the couch or then just like hang out with friends no scotch okay. no, no 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 drink because i realized at 40 you need another day to recover after that and, and your next morning is screwed yeah so i was just like so this is one of the things i realized with age. just like what i, I had a late night yesterday 12 o'clock 12 o'clock is a late night for me and my morning was not so good today. So I realized that I need to. So one habit, many people, one bad habit, many people started over the lockdown was drinking, right? I mean, started I was drinking or, or doubled or it got maybe doubled. I was drinking wine every day. And the next day I felt awful, awful. Yeah. So now I, I save it for the weekend. Yeah. And the, yeah. the more we reduce our alcohol, the better, because it does mm -hmm. absolutely nothing for us. Yep. Yeah. It helped a lot when we were single. <laughs> That's only if you get the other person drunk. Didn't matter to me. Didn't. <laughs> you became funnier, you know, with alcohol. <laughs> you don't remember half yeah. of it, but you became funnier. Okay. So that's, what, so that's my question when I ask my clients. I'm like, do you drink to make other people interesting or yourself interesting? Myself. Mm. <laughs> Myself, I don't think if the person changes who they are. Okay, if you could have dinner with one person, living or dead, that you've not had dinner with, uh, who would it be? 
Um, probably Edison. My friend Thomas. Yeah, Thomas. Yeah, my buddy <laughs> from the hood. <laughs> <laughs> If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Mm, so reading minds I already have. Let me see. Probably no, no. teleportation. Teleportation. Where would you teleport to? Just I, 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 I don't enjoy flying as much now. Okay. It's mm. still a shitty experience. The airports. Yeah, the it's, it's crap. It gets worse. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Especially the economy. It still sucks. Yeah. Even business sucks, but the economy is just painful. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so uh, my my funda is that you fly economy till you fly private. Don't do anything in between. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think Sabrina and I are uh, about five million subscribers away from flying private. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, if you had to describe your personal brand in five words, ten words, you know, who is Ashton Doctor? I say wisdom. Um, Innocence, I say uh, a, 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 a safe zone, um, a guide, and uh, I think someone who's fun. Okay. Mm. So in in India we have this word called masti. No mm-hmm. So masti is playful, fun. Yeah. Yeah. So so, so masti. Okay. Very mm. cool. Mm. Okay. What self purchase? Under two hundred dollars has made a significant impact in your life. What is two hundred dollars in rupees? Sixteen thousand. Just say under two thousand yeah. rupees. Let's make it easier. Uh, yes. All right. Uh, oh, oh, books. My, I have a library books. full of them. So, like, because one book is basically a person's entire life condensed into Couple four days. Pages. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What? Um. So oh, especially right question. now, the, yeah. the book that I'm. Yeah. The book that yeah. I'm. Like, that, that's probably a follow-up question of which yeah. book. What, what's your yeah? So, that, so I'm currently reading the Bhagavad Gita by Yogananda Paramhansa, the person who wrote an autobiography of a yogi, and he's basically looked at the entire Bhagavad Gita not as a story but as an esoteric manual. So, from a spiritual point of view, so each of the Pandavas are like the chakras, each of the Kauravas are like particular um, aspects of your life that you need to start getting rid of and releasing from. So it's very interesting the way that he has understood the whole concept. Ashton, um, in one of your uh, pods uh, on YouTube, I saw you did a podcast with another YouTube, another podcaster. And you said that, you know, it's very difficult to interview somebody else who's in the same space. Uh, I disagree. I think you are wonderful to interview. I think uh, this has been, uh, for me at least, it's been a real pleasure to get to know you and uh, learn from you. I apologize for all the interruptions. It's my personality and excitement. Uh, but oh, bad, habit. bad habit. But <laughs> I look forward to uh, coming to meet you in Bombay in person and creating good habits together. Let's do this. Amazing. Thank you so much for having me on. Thank you so much. I feel like you are, you know, why we do this podcast, you know, to talk about, talk to successful people around the world. And I, I've really enjoyed this. And one thing you said at the beginning that I'm really going to take with me is motivation is fleeting. Mm. Um, that has stuck it's intention. with me. So, intention. Yeah. I'm going to find intention in everything. Sucks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. This has thank been you. great. Very great. My pleasure. My um, pleasure. Thank you, everyone. This has been a phenomenal episode of Indian Explorers. We hope you enjoyed it and please share it with others. Have a great day, everyone.